continue the relational theme by speaking of categories of relations as models of Okay, thank you. I'm going to be talking about some joint work I've been doing with Chris Hoynan. Um, who's over there. Uh, and yes, it's continuing our trilogy of rel theme models, I suppose.
Jason Overlay, who will be talking about this uh, after lunch in categories and control, I, I think. So that's the construction. So now let's start thinking about these as toy models. So we're going to think about what are the physical systems in these toy models. So we're looking for the analog of C star algebras. In the categorical formulation, these are described by these special dagger Frobenius structures. So that's an object in a dagger by ca category uh, with these multiplication and unit maps, and they satisfy the equations. The point being that when we look at this in F Hill, we get precisely finite dimensional C star algebras. The surprising thing that was found is that uh, a special dagger for mean structure in rel is exactly the same thing as a small groupoid. So there the, um, the multiplication morphism here is the relation that composes two morphisms of your groupoid if you can compose them. And the unit picks out all your identities of the groupoid. So the first result is that li this lifts immediately to this more general setting. So the special dagger for being structures in relative C are just the same thing as internal groupoids in C. Um, so I need to tell you what an internal groupoid is, but essentially you take the definition, uh, so you can define an internal category, you take the definition of a, of a category and you write it as a load of commutative diagrams for these sets, and that gives you a definition of a category internal to any other one, and similarly with groupoids. So for example, if this was internal to the category of groups, we have this object A of morphisms, so we have a group of morphisms, we have an object O of objects, so a group of objects, and then we'll have arrows between them which represent like the domain map and composition and so forth. And they have to satisfy a big load of <coughs> diagrams that just say the familiar things that a category satisfies. The way the proof works is using this technique I mentioned of the internal logic. So we can just pretend we're working between relations because we already have a proof there. And we just note that this proof all fits inside the logic of these categories. So that gives us a way to describe the physical systems in our toy model. But also turning that around, it gives us a new way to think about internal groupoids, and they're something that do get studied throughout maps. So in set, they're just small groupoids. In group, they're known by a few different equivalent things. So by John Byers and Alan Ladder, they were called uh, study the strict two groups, and they're known to be the same thing as crossed modules, which is something well known from homotopy theory. And in similarly, internal groupoids in the category of vector spaces have been studied uh, in higher category theory as two vector spaces, and there's a yeah, they're actually a bit different to the two Hilbert spaces that you may have heard of, and not quite the same. But anyway. So those are the physical systems in our toy model. Now let's think about the processes that we allow between them. So we're looking for the analog of completely positive maps. So categorically, we talk about the CP construction. So this is the same as the CP star construction that Oscar talked about the other day. So they're in the middle of a notational shift here. But um, the objects are going to be these special Frobenius structures. And the morphisms are these completely positive morphisms. So that's just defined in this way. So on the left, we have something that's like the Choi matrix from quantum theory, and we're just saying that it's positive. So these are the processes we're going to be thinking about. The point is, when you start from F Hill, you get finite, finite dimensional C star algebras and completely positive maps. Now, when you start from REL, we know the objects are going to be these small groupoids. But the, uh, the completely positive maps have quite a strange form, really. So the relations between the groupoids, G and H, say, so between their sets of morphisms. They respect the inverses of the groupoids, and they respect the identities of the groupoids, but they don't have anything to do with the composition. And I think the fact that this definition is a bit strange is why you get unusual behavior in RAL from a quantum perspective. And now we're looking at this more general construction, we can ask, well, for some other version of RAL-C, does this become more natural? So the rest of the talk is going to be talking about a special class of categories where this is the case. So they're going to put mold shape categories. So let's just think about groups of vector spaces. In these categories, you'll find that any relation at all satisfies this law. So what it says is if you have two points and they're related to this, some shared point, they're related to all the same shared points, um, which is quite a strong statement, really. Where does it come from? Well, if you imagine we're looking at vector spaces, say, R is now a subspace of two vector spaces rather than merely a subset. So in particular, it's closed under these linear combinations. So if A, C, B, C, and B, D are all in there, you can add them in this way, and that's how you get the fourth one. And you can do the same thing for groups. So this is the extra law. It gives us a lot of extra structure on our relations. And it, we call CML shift category when this holds. So these categories have a lot of nice properties. So I mentioned internal groupoids earlier, and internal categories are defined similarly. In these categories, both notions are exactly the same, and that will become relevant in a second. And the other thing is that these completely positive relations that we introduced earlier um, are going to now respect the composition in the way they didn't between these sets. So all of that is summed up in this result. 
a lot of construction here, so we'll go through it slowly. So when C is a multi regular category, we get the following equivalences of categories. So we start from C, let's think of that multi regular, so something like the category of uh, vector spaces. We build its category of relations, that's like these linear relations we've heard about. And then we build the CP construction of that, and this is our toy model that we're interested in studying. Um, but equally, we could start from C and build its category of internal categories, or its category of internal groupoids. So there, the morphisms are quickly defined notion of internal function. Okay, and then from there, we build that categories, category of relations. Now, when C is multi shared, internal groupoids and internal categories are the same, so that's why we have the equivalents on the right there. And uh, yeah, so what this result tells us is the objects of CP of LSC are these internal groupoids, and the morphisms from groupoid G to groupoid H are just subgroupoids of G times H. So that's a much more natural um, description from a mathematical perspective. The relations are now respecting the composition of these groupoids. Um, what's interesting about this result, I think, is that we think of CP as something to do with mixing in quantum theory. So we're sort of thinking of this as a, a, a category of mixed and pure processes. But on the right hand side, we have something that seems to be more to do with higher category theory, where you might look at internal categories and things like that. So it's quite an interesting link between these areas. So just some examples, these are all null check categories. So groups, vector spaces, lots of categories of algebras, like rings and Lie algebras and many more, and any abelian category. So this is still quite a general result. Um, some examples of the theorem. So we said that the internal groupoids in group are these crossed modules, so these are well-known in homotopy theory. And in vector spaces, we have these two vector spaces. So the, particularly the group example does seem to be a bridge between sort of concepts from uh, categorical quantum mechanics and something to do with homotopy theory, which is quite interesting. Sorry, that's a good question. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, 2 vex k is, is very commonly okay, so that might be a used as a name, but as a, for a 2 category, that's not what you mean. No, that's not what I mean. Obviously, yeah. you're, you're saying that it indicates connections. Like a, what, yeah, I don't, exactly mean, so I don't mean in that sense that's true. So when I say 2 vex, I mean the category of these two vector spaces, which are just internal categories in the category of vector spaces. So objects of two vector spaces and morphisms are Inter objects. internal functions, yeah. So that's what I mean. Um, okay, so what this, this is quite abstract, but what it does is it gives us a way to understand what this toy model looks like. So we're interested in this CP category, and we know exactly how to describe it now. The objects of these group points and the morphisms are just subgroup points of them. So now let's go back to the original aim of actually thinking about these as a toy model of quantum theory. So what are the sort of quantum properties of these categories? So one thing we heard about in the workshop uh, on Monday, I think, from Paul, was a nice uh, quality of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which he described as no, uh, no disturbance implies no information. So this is something we can put in the categorical language. So it, it would be something like this. We have some uh, system B, which we think of as a quantum system. And we have some completely positive map M going from B to B along with some classical system. So that's like a measurement. And the picture on the left says no disturbance. If we just look at what happens to the system, uh, not the information, then it's left completely alone. And the implication says, well, if we have no disturbance, we have no information. The, uh, the output that we get on the classical system is disconnected from the input, so it doesn't really depend on what's going on on the quantum system. My point, of course, is this holds in F hill, and this is one thing that uncertainty principle tells us. It doesn't hold in rel, so this is not one of these pathological sort of properties of rel. You can just construct some counterexamples and find out sets. But the new thing is that it does hold when C is multi in rel of C. So the same categories that um, gave us a nice description of this CP construction, also giving us this nice quantum behavior in the sense that we have this, this principle holding here. And another one that we could look at is no broadcasting theorem. So that tells us that if we have some system that has a broadcasting map, then it's classical. So categorically, we have some system A with broadcasting map B, so it goes from A to two copies of A, and if we just discard either of the outputs, we get a pure channel going straight across, so we have on the left here. Um, then we know that the system is in fact classical, so that corresponds to having a commutative structure. And again, we get all the same results, so this holds in F hill, in the sense that it holds in CP, 
PFF helps, it holds between CSA outputs. It doesn't hold in CPFL, and it does hold in CPFL at C. So what I would say is that, yeah, these rel C categories behave more quantum-like um, from a diagrammatic perspective. So they're somewhere between rel and f hill in how they behave as twin models. Can I ask a question? Yes. Third broadcasting B, it's just an arbitrary morphism. No, it needs to be completely positive. Um, oh, sorry, but in the category. Um, it's an arbitrary, well, it needs to satisfy this relation here. So if any completely positive, yeah. any morphism in CP, which satisfies this relation. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. So the picture isn't quite this clear in the sense that these do have some slightly unusual behavior from a quantum perspective. So when C is multi, one thing we get is that any state is actually a projection in this sense here. Um, so with a normal C-style algebra, states satisfying this diagrammatic condition are precisely projections in the C-style algebra. So that's quite unusual, really. It seems to say that states are sort of pure in the sense. In fact, we all um, more strikingly, perhaps, this happens in some special cases, but it includes the ones we've looked at. So with groups of vector spaces, any two classical points are in fact equal for any given structure. So these points that get copied by a given structure are used to model classical data, so they usually represent the outcomes of an experiment. And what this says essentially is that we can't have distinct outcomes. So this gives us, this makes it very difficult, would make it very difficult to sort of formulate a lot of quantum protocols in these categories. So they're missing this sort of classical control aspect. But I'd say diagrammatically they behave uh, in quite a quantum way. So let's just go over what we've seen. This construction gives us um, a load of new toy models to think about. But the point I want to stress is that the internal logic makes them very easy to work with. So everything that was done in this talk was all proved using this technique of thinking about the internal logic of these categories and pretending that we're working with sets and relations. So even though these are category theoretic results, they weren't proved by doing big diagram chases and all of this sort of proper pattern theory stuff. And when C is Molchev, we had this nice result where we could describe the CP category. And this was from a mathematical perspective, giving some interesting connections between different areas. Um, but let's think about these as toy models. One last thing I haven't mentioned yet is the idea of superposition. So generally in the categorical framework, we try to emphasize composition over superposition. So we think about entanglement and the way systems fit together over notions like superposition or linear structure. However, the main two models people look at, Ethel and Rel, both do actually come with superposition. So these models help to emphasize the point. Whenever C is Malcher, if Rel of C has a suitable notion of superposition, so a way of adding morphisms in the category, then it, it becomes trivial. So in all the interesting cases, there won't be any nice superposition for and yet we've seen they can have quite quantum-like behavior in the sense that they can um, satisfy things like Heisenberg uncertainty and you no know, broadcasting principle. So roughly I'd say that we can lay out these two models on a, on a continuum like this. Um, and so yeah, we've managed to find this quantum-like behavior without a notion of superposition, and this separating out of aspects is one of the nice things about toy models, and hopefully models like this help us understand what makes quantum theory so special. So thanks for listening. Heisenberg, yes. certainty, no disturbance, 
principle. Yeah. So, so if you can prove that this is first one is true for all Alchef categories, can you actually um, get a kind of formula for the psi there? It seems to me that with the uh, kind of limited logic you're using, you could actually maybe like figure out what the psi yeah, had to that's be. Interesting. Um, or did you just prove that it? I just proved the implication holds, and I didn't try to think about that actually. But yeah, you might be able to find a way to. Yeah, you probably in the process you do actually get a description of what phi is as some sub group point or something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah, I think so. I am not off the top of my head though. Yep, sure. Yep. Okay, I guess it's lunchtime. What? No? Wait. Uh, Peter's pointing his finger at somebody. Ah, uh, okay, sure. The scalars. The scalars. Um, they'll be the same. Uh, the scalars will be relations from, so there'll be sub-objects of the terminal object, I suppose. So in most, uh, in say group or vec, they'll still be the trivial, just zero or one. Um, and more generally, it's just some abstract. Yeah, and I guess when I, I think of these as, as still having the trivial scalars really, but I, I suppose in general, it's not actually. But the like, if it's a terminal object, then you technically only have... Oh, yeah, that's it, right. Uh, up to equivalence. So I suppose you have pretty... Sorry? What's the... What is your statement? If it's a terminal object, then the maps from the terminal object to the terminal object are just... There can be categories with sub-terminal. Yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah, of course. You but can maybe not an object. Be, yeah, but then there so would be... Maybe maybe proper sub-object of A times B like this. So here it will be a sub-object. Subjects of one, but there could be interesting other ones. I think it could be other subjects in general. Yeah, I don't know. For Malchef categories, maybe there aren't yeah. interesting ones, but I don't know. Really sure. Okay, we'll ponder that over lunch. Well, yeah. Okay, just that.